roll again. Another one in the hole. Hey there golfers, I'm Drew Mahol the Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, a master club fitter here in the Quintech putting studio at the Minnetonka Tour Van. We've got a, a unique putter model here to test out and to try out and review here. It's the Cobra King Super Sport 35. Uh, a very unique one from Cobra. A lot of uh, interesting technologies that really haven't been seen before packed into that one. Um, we'll kind of get into that a little bit, but uh, you know, Thomas, I think this is maybe sort of a preview of what's to come from Cobra, maybe getting into um, kind of back in sort of creating and constructing putters. Um, and they're doing it a very unique and interesting way, which is kind of how they want to do it, right? They want to make something different that really catches people's eye, and I think they've done that here. Yeah, so whether this is a preview of what's to come or a review on the King Super Sport 35 putter, I think Cobra's gonna be pushing the envelope when it comes to technology. So it's my understanding that Cobra very soon will be getting into the putter market in 2021. Mm -hmm. So this was a limited run that went to retail. Uh, in 48 hours, they sold all 500 units. So this is one of the 500 units that they did sell. Um, and I think it's gonna be an exciting 2021 for Cobra. Yeah, I think, you know, the first, the, the most interesting part of it to me is the 3D printing aspect. So it's constructed with 3D printing, which, you know, they kind of parted with HP and they're able to do the prototyping way faster than, you know, normal construction methods. Um, you know, put together a bunch of different models, identify which is the best one, and through the 3D printing process came up with this design here, which, looking at it, Thomas, it's not a, it's a little different than what you might see on the shelf. That's, it's, I think it's kind of a blade, but it doesn't, it, it, it looks certainly different. So give us, I guess, your opinion on how it looks before we maybe get into more of some of the details and do some testing. Yeah, you can definitely kind of notice the front part of the, of the putter is kind of more that more traditional look. And then you look at the back and you've got these 3D printing that's very, very mm -hmm. obvious with the putter. Um, the one thing that really stands out to me here is the collaboration with uh, with sick putter technology and Bryson DeChambeau. That was mm -hmm. kind of the, the big piece. So the descending loft technology on this putter. So essentially, if you were gonna catch the ball high on the face, there is four degrees of loft on, on, on that putter. Essentially, what's gonna happen, normally you're gonna have your hands a little forward. Yeah. It's gonna reduce the loft to get that ball to roll normally as well. If at the other end of the spectrum, you have your hands back at impact, there's only one degree of loft at the bottom of the putter there too. So it's also gonna get that ball to launch and roll on that same kind of optical mm -hmm. window there too. So sick putters, their, their, their technology is awesome. So I mentioned four degrees at the top, three, two, one. So it's got quite the window depending on where you catch on the club face. Yeah, that's a very interesting and, and I mean, clever uh, innovation there by kind of sick and Cobra to come up with that design because that you think about putting, that is how it works, right? You catch it low on the face, it's because most of the time your hands are back and vice versa if you catch it high on the face and that way they've uh, manipulated the loft on the face to correct that. So, um, you know, Thomas, I think we can do a little bit of testing here. We've got Quintech up and running. Do a little bit of testing to see how these, you know, launch angle, the spin, and those type of numbers work out uh, based on this putter. Um, so, you want to get after it here? Yeah, let's bury up the hands forward and hands back and see what yeah. happens. And also bear with us as well. We do have uh, uh, some tour van fittings going on nearby in the bays next to us. So, please keep in mind um, that we might have some extra background noise for you. But, um, Thomas, let's uh, let's do this. Let's do some putts. That means we're gonna. Sounds like I had a nice good roll. That's a not bad on the first not one bad. there. <laughs> Dead center of the cup. Yeah. Yeah. And look I at mean, those, those numbers. numbers are excellent mm -hmm. right there. So that first shot that I just hit there, the launch angle was 1.5 degrees. So because the ball launched at 1.5 degrees, we got some overspin on that ball. Yeah. Overspin when you're putting, you want to get that ball to roll forward. You yeah. don't want to have ever have it rolling backwards. And we can kind of see that with regards to the green trend, how that ball starts mm -hmm. to kind of roll forward and keep rolling there too. So that mm -hmm. was that was some pretty good numbers there with that with that first putt there too. So right. let's hit a couple you, more. You mentioned the you know getting the ball in forward spin, right? And you think about a ball rolling, if it's rolling forward, a kind of end over end, so to speak. It's, it's more likely to go on a straight line versus if it's back, you maybe see on, for example, when you attack a, a green with a wedge and you have backspin on it, you can't necessarily predict which direction it's gonna come back necessarily, but if it's rolling forward, it's mostly in a straight line, right? It's mostly so. gonna stay pretty straight. Mm -hmm. And you can kind of see that. So on the numbers on the right, so ball, ball numbers, you can see green is exceptionally good. So yep. yellow means it's ever so slightly outside of the window. You'll notice it says minus 16 RPMs with the, with the spin. So that had 
slight amount of pump spin on it, mm -hmm. but that's not much at all. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a good roll again. Another one in the hole. Might be a new putter in the bag for Thomas, although it's not an arm lock putter. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that was that was almost identical to the last one. Mm -hmm. So launch angle at 1.58. So ideally, you you know, ideal launch with with putter is really kind of around one to three degrees. Okay. So that I mean that's spot on with regards to kind of numbers. So mm -hmm. and you're right. This is the first two putts that I've hit without an arm lock putter in, right. in a long time. So that, that was pretty good there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also, I mean, this is free, about more about your stroke than anything, but that hook's been to decrease, and then I think, you know, the start of forward rotation is nice, too, because uh, that indicates that that ball is starting with topspin already. And so I think now will be interesting to see, you know, I think you're maybe going to try to manipulate in terms of maybe having your hands back a little bit or hands forward and trying to, you know, test out that descending loft technology to see how that performs. And if the numbers are still adequate, even though you're, the way you're striking the putt might not be perfect. Yeah, so for... People that are watching, you may have seen a putter fitting that I did recently with Larry Bobka in the, in the studio. We actually had to reduce the loft on my current putter because mm -hmm. I was launching the ball almost six degrees in the air. Yeah. So at impact, my hands were kind of a little bit behind. I had too much loft at, at impact. So this will be interesting to see if I kind of manipulate it to mm -hmm. see if this descending loft technology does its job. So mm -hmm. essentially, when I'm going to be back at impact, now I'm going to catch it a little bit low on the face because there's only one degree at the bottom there, yeah. it should still roll pretty good. Mm -hmm. So this will be interesting to test. Notice that I pulled it a little bit because I had that putter back at impact. Mm -hmm. This will be kind of interesting. So I really tried to add some loft here. Yeah. Let's see. Interesting. So it still stayed within that window. I mentioned mm -hmm. that one to three window is, like, yep. is ideal. It was towards the top end. But yep. when, we, when we did my previous videos, my launch was five, six degrees mm -hmm. in the air. So that was pretty good. The other numbers were actually pretty good too. Yeah, I mean, the, the, other, the other three numbers are ideal, right? I mean, you actually you put a tad, tad of cut spin on it very, very slightly. I mean, it's essentially straight, but. Yeah. Um, and then you have even more top spin, I believe, than the other ones. So that's an indication of, um, you know, how effective that can be. Uh, you know, decreasing the loft lower on the face there was what helped you kind of maintain those numbers because you, have to imagine, you know, your launch angle would have been for one higher, and then those other numbers may not have been green uh, with a, a standard, you know, construction loft there. Yeah, that, that forward roll, that really, I'm surprised it was still rolling forward. That was the big, big shock to me right off the bat. Mm -hmm. But you know, launch angle, for viewers that are kind of watching here, at impact, I felt like I was like this at impact. I was really trying to manipulate that club face to mm -hmm. be pretty far back. But you'll notice the ball only launched one degree higher. But the other numbers were, I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty darn good with regards to optimal mm -hmm. numbers. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what you're looking for. And you, I mean, like Larry always says when he does these fittings, is you want, those, you want as many green numbers on there as you can possibly get. So that's a good one there. I mean, okay. you had the launch angle a tad high, but uh, I mean, that was, again, you were really manipulating that. I was, there, yeah. So. so let's try another one, maybe. <laughs> that's like, <laughs> let's you see made what it. <laughs> Interesting. So that looked like it had a little bit higher launch to it. That was me really manipulating it. That is, a, that is incredible. <laughs> that's, that's unreal how good that is. Yeah, I mean, so you're seeing here now on this image, you can see kind of the, the red line in like right away. I think that's the first maybe red line we've seen on this roll here, indicating that, you know, the launch was a little bit high, but then, I mean. The other, I mean, the, it's still it's, got it's forward perfect. roll on it. It's still yep. plus 15 RPMs. Mm -hmm. It still it's ultimately has topspin on it, even yep. though you are doing your best to <laughs> not necessarily <laughs> hit it that way. So The thing that amazes me, I mean, that's just me trying to manipulate, feel like I'm breaking my wrists down, is that, is that spin, no, mm -hmm. it's minus one RPM. That's, you can't really get any better than that. Right. Well, now we can uh, maybe try the other way. So you can kind of forward press, see if that uh, higher loft on top of the club face kind of produces you know, the same results. Okay. Nice forward press there. There you go. Definitely was rolling. It definitely started its forward roll sooner, I think. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, I mean, you can see the launch angle is a little lower. That's, once again, that's me really exaggerating mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Uh, but still, I mean, that's, that's pretty good numbers overall. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And green is good. So, so when I'm mean, looking at that ball rolling like that, yep. you don't 
often get that green constantly. It may take two or three steps for it to start to start rolling forward. Yeah. Yeah, so this one, actually, it started rolling forward almost like too soon. <laughs> yeah. It was almost like just boom right away, uh, which is, again, I mean, that's, you are, I, I'm watching you manipulate this stroke, and it is like, you're doing, uh, <laughs> yeah. you're, you're getting pretty aggressive with it, but the results and the numbers indicate that you're not doing anything that wrong, so which is a testament to how that putter design is unique enough that, you know, really any putting stroke out there, good, bad, um, you know, whether it's, you know, we can talk about arc and stuff too, at least with this model in particular, there's a little bit of arc, maybe that's fitting it best, but the way the face is constructed, it's forgiving enough and it provides enough assistance that it might not even like matter as much what your stroke is. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm actually, I'm surprised how consistent that launch angle has been. Like we said, mm -hmm. we have been, I've been manipulating this extreme mm -hmm. and we've had a change from uh, a lowest is 0 0.3 and a highest was two and a half. Yeah. And so you had been putting yeah. your, you know, prior to that meant that fitting that you mentioned with Larry, your launch angle was five, six degrees. You know, you're, you were outside that window yeah. a decent amount and we're staying very close or within that window and you're manipulating things to a, a pretty, you know, considerable degree here. Yeah. So I, I think for sure Cobra's onto something with collaborating with the sick putting mm -hmm. technology there. So, Kudos to Bryson and Sick and, and Cobra for kind of getting all together there. So it's really impressive. I'm, I'm, I'm shocked actually. I'm really shocked with how much that I was exaggerating when at, at this way and then this way at impact. Mm -hmm. That launch angle hardly changed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so clearly the loft is, is that uh, you know, descending loft technology is clearly helping something. Uh, yeah. Before you know, kind of officially wrapping this up, I did want to get your thoughts on like the feel. Says so there is that there's sort of four milled pieces all kind of together there yep. a, a, with an aluminum face. So how does it feel to you at impact? The aluminum face feels very soft. Mm -hmm. It feels really good. Now we did, we also didn't touch on the weight of this putter here yeah. too. It is a heavy putter. Yeah, the the head weight's 375 grams, the shaft weight's 125 grams, and then the grip's 99 grams. And I actually did measure the the club just to kind of see the tolerances there came in at like 595 so it's just under 600 and that was the tolerance was impressive 34 inches in length is, is the potter that with this particular model but i think when uh cobra produces newer stuff they'll have a, have a wider range of putter styles mm -hmm. i can't say anything yet but i'm sure soon we'll see some good right. stuff from cobra yeah i mean if this is sort of their kind of teaser right preview if you will for what's to come and They've got all this loaded technology in there, this descending loft stuff that clearly works. And then now, now this is just one head model, but if they're able to add you know, more distinct models, maybe for players that like the, the look of a mallet or like the look of a more traditional blade or like the look of a rounded mallet, or you know, there's a many different looks that players like. And of course, we'll talk about you know, maybe different neck types as well. And then you know, that's when they're gonna really be able to reach people and that performance is going to hit as many golfers as possible because I mean, the technology works for anything and then you add in the looks element as well. This could be a home run here if they, if they do go that route. Yeah, I think stay tuned for Cobra in 2021 with regards to putters. I wouldn't be surprised if they have a kind of a wide, wide line of putters that fit different, different kind of putter styles. Um, this Super Sport 35, it's got a little bit of toe hang on it. It's kind of, kind of in, that, in that regards to kind of the, the mid toe hang, mm -hmm. the plumber's neck. But yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be an exciting year for Cobra in 2021.